Hello everyone, here's a car from my bygone era. This, this guy is actually my work colleague. He wants an electronic distributor uh, put into, it's a, it's a Mini, but actually has a Mini Metro engine in it. So the engine is from 1984, but the Mini is 1989. So this is the electronic one. I'm not sure how much he paid for it, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's actually to try and resolve a problem with this car. It's got hesitation. At two and a half thousand revs, but I had said to him, I don't think that's your issue, but he wanted it changed anyway, so I'll just take you through a step-by-step -step procedure, and I'll just show you at the end how the thing runs, and see what you think's wrong with it. So the first thing to do is, if you have access to compressed air, is just to give it a good uh, clean, just blow it out all the, the muck and the dirt from around about the distributor, and around about the plugs. So you then remove number one plug, and you can see this is running extremely rich, this car, and the plug is the BP6ES, I'm sure that's the right one, it came from some mini uh, shop down south, <laughs> England, and uh, but as I say, it's running rich, so I think the problem is a carburetor, but here we go, we'll replace this. Thing anyway. The next thing is to remove the clips from the side of the distributor cap uh, <coughs> because what you're trying to do here is find out where number one, where the the distributor is pointing to number one plug in the cap, so where the rotor arm is pointing. Now I'm sure, I'll get this, extract this, I'll just wait for the video to catch up. I'm sure when you're looking on top of the distributor, that, that number one plug there is roughly at the one o'clock position, I'll show you in the next clip, so you don't have to be spot on, but you need to be roughly near it in order, because you want to get your timing marks and you want to make sure that the cylinder is at top dead centre, so I'll just let the video roll and uh, see that's where point to number one position, number number one o'clock position. So I've just put this shot in this because this is where the engine landed, well it stopped cranking it, so we're at the wrong position, we need to turn that cam to get it to near TDC as possible. So that's my rotor arm in the correct position when it's roughly pointing towards the wire. That's the negative, it goes to the negative side of the coil. So that for me is number one position. And I'll show you on the crankshaft. See that little notch? Yeah, you better to mark that with tipex, but when that's in that position, that's, that's roughly, well that would be exactly at top dead center. So you know you're, uh, you're good to go. So what I do is then take carb cleaner and give it a good spray because what I'm going to do is mark it up with my favourite which is Tipex and this is just a belts and braces so you can see I've marked up so should I get into trouble I know my markings with my rotor arm and with the body and I can th pop the thing back in and use the old distributor which I know works so it's a 11mm socket but I end up using a spanner because <laughs> the access into this is very poor because of that that pipe work there in front so I managed to get that clamp out and uh, it's painful by the way to put this clamp back in oh man you're just about standing on your head but anyway there it's out and uh, then you extract the distributor so oh, the other thing I've got to say make sure you disconnect the, the cabling it's only the wee negative lead you can see that at the bottom and the vacuum see the vacuum connection there you disconnect that as well and take away this uh, this negative lead here so here's a new one, set that up, you can see um, the rotor arm is pointing towards the cable, so that for me is number one TDC, and just at that I then pop the thing back in, uh, but it's just got to move it about a wee bit when you're going back in, because it has to key in to the crankshaft, I'm sure it's the crankshaft on this, uh, the bottom part of the whole thing, so that for me is number one position. So I then install the distributor, and as I pointed out, just uh, rock it gently to get the key in. And you can see there I'm at the number four, uh, one position, pointing towards the wires for me. And remember to power this uh, new distributor up with the power off the coil. And then put the negative lead in, you can find that down the front next to the radiator. So that's everything all connected. And it's just a matter of seeing if the thing will start. And it did. But if it doesn't start, don't worry. You can all just move the distributor back and forward slightly till it starts or if it doesn't work at all put the old one back in so we get the the Gunson, Gunson super strobe out 
and we want to time it up now so you put it on number one plug and you power it i just powered it from the positive side of the coil and grounded the earth lead onto the block so you must have the distributor slightly slack at this bit a bit so you can rotate it so remove the air cleaner and what you want to do is increase the rpm to 1500 rpm as you can see there in the clock and the vacuum pipe disconnected from the distributor so you get the strobe flashing and the first camera shot is actually at 1500 rpm and you want it seven degrees so you can see that's roughly seven but because of my frame rate my camera is terrible it didn't stay so well so this is us actually back at idle with the vacuum pipe connected and you can see there i must be about eight degrees nine degrees at 950 rpm so the timing seems to be spot on here and uh, so i then decide uh, oh yes here's here's color tune this is <laughs> this is from this game this was well at the bottom of my toolbox so you put this into the spark plug hole and you can check your mixture with this so you see when you rev it up should be bright red because that's a rich mixture mixture but when you're at idle you want it to be blue like a paraffin lamp so that means it's burning most efficiently so although at idle it's a different circuit that does the, the enrichment when you, when you give it the acceleration so just an indication so at this point i want you to check the needle within the carburetor so you remove the three screws and you lift it off and uh, i couldn't actually see anything wrong with this needle looks quite clean and it's quite straight and i'm sure they're sure if i can remember they're all quite flexible anyway so that looks clean and actually the car body looked quite clean but i did keep uh, losing oil from the dashboard so there seems to be a problem within the dashboard that uh, must be a seal away or something like that so i was trying to wonder when i take it the next i take it a test drive and to see if it's re uh, lean or rich but you're going to see a scope part that proves the point so before I done all that, I thought I would just do a compression test. So you remove the positive lead to the coil. And uh, the way I was always taught that uh, you crank the thing over for about four rotations. Or you just count four in your head. And just so you can see, pedal right to the floor. And then you don't want it to start. And you give it a barrel over. Sorry, you turn over the engine. And uh, there you go. That's a good healthy compression of a 30 year old engine. So here's here's the Tesla and I'll let you hear it. You hear that? Oh, it's like fuel starvation. But the trouble is it isn't st fuel starvation, it's the opposite. Watch this scope pattern and I'll let you listen to this. when you're accelerating and when I'm saying chuggy chuggy chug chug <laughs> that's when it's missing or low power that spark line you can see it, it's pointing down the way so I was taught if it's pointing up the way it was a lean mixture if it's pointing down the way it's a rich mixture so to me the problem with this car is the carburetor it's an over rich mixture between 2000 and 3500 rpm if you go over that the thing goes it goes great but uh, I think the mixture is just too rich so it's something to do with the loss of oil within the dashboard indeed the fault with this car is the carburetor so i believe you can get an overhaul kit for them uh, i believe there's some diaphragms within it but uh, if anybody's came across these symptoms before you can chime in the chat and it would help this guy uh, my work colleague out. anyway thank you cheers bye now here's a here's a video for those who remember this from the past remember setting up the distributor with the points get the old feeler gauges in there and setting the gap Oh boys, this takes us back. But uh, this one was working fine. And there's, that's we point to the condenser or the capacitor. And there's the wee grub screw. So uh, I would say, are you not glad to see the back of these? Remember bouncing points and everything like that? Oof, it was a pain. Anyway, just thought I'd put that clip in. Cheers.